As we come to FOMO here uh, in the lunch hour here in Chicago, Chipotle, I know that this is uh, a place that in certainly in my younger years I frequented probably more than uh, I should have, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's a great, great uh, location. It's one that in, in some ways has set the standard for, for fast, convenient food and, and how to scale a business but not lose quality. That's a good way to put it too. And also how to show people how to use its own products well, not just products, but I always joke about this when I'm talking to Oliver, you can get two meals out of a burrito bowl, you know, and it's become one of those stocks that are doing well in a downturn because mm -hmm. people know that because maybe they don't want to go to McDonald's. That's usually a stock that does extremely well in a downturn as well, but mm -hmm. they have options at Chipotle that are different. And today this stock is seeing a little bit more activity, although it is slightly lower. It was named a fresh pick over at Bayer. Now this analyst, says that he sees signs of strong same store sales momentum when it mm. comes to traffic rather not sales but traffic that'll eventually translate into sales right but he says that chipotle is remaining the top idea for investors with a 12-month horizon and that they see an attractive near-term trading opportunity for the shares now this is also based on the potential of multiple positive catalysts to emerge in the coming months for Chipotle and that's why Baird also reiterates its outperform rating on the stock. And this stock, by the way, Chipotle Mexican Grill is up year to date by a huge measure, almost 40% higher year to date. It's outpacing the S&P 500, of course, and people are still buying burritos. <laughs> this has been a name that seemingly, as long as I've covered markets, has consistently outperformed. Mm -hmm. Might not be up the same margins you see a name like NVIDIA at any given point, right. but it has been a steady outperformer. I mean, really the only downturns that, that I can remember are around COVID, where everything was lower. It's snapped back by, you know, May of 2020, it was already at new all-time highs, where you didn't yeah. see that in very many other names. It was able to adapt and move quickly. Uh, it's always been able to uh, drive hype, uh, be it new product release, or ways to you know kind of get your bowl or burrito or taco or whatever it may be uh, consistent uh, you know control over its own price and uh, that elasticity of the, the demand allowing for increases in prices yet no drop off in the amount of uh, burritos or burrito bowls that they're selling uh, but it had been a little bit more of a sideways performer I would say in 2022 but the market itself was lower so even at that time maybe it's not screeching to new all-time highs mm -hmm but it's outperforming through resilience. This has been a name that is focused on growth, but also, as I said, really focused on uh, its quality of its product. You talked about uh, the uh, analyst over at Baird and kind of the excitement that they see in this one. And it's really not, as much as they want to call it a fresh pick, this is the story of Chipotle. They're kind of highlighting what Chipotle has done so well. Uh, it's no surprise that nearly seven in 10 of analysts that, that cover it, of which you know there's over 30 of them, uh, have a buy rating. There's zero cells, the others are in the hold camp. So tons of optimism here and a price target uh, from, from David Tr uh, Tarantino of 2,400 bucks. Mm. You know, we're, we used to see these big stock prices when you saw Amazon and Alphabet on a daily basis mm -hmm. carrying those, but Chipotle, the one holding strong, refusing to, to split its share price, even though some of those other big ones decided to. I think that's amazing too. The fact that its stock price is so high, it's not necessarily one of the legacy names mm -mm. that we've seen here for decades on decades. It's a food place. And just to let you guys know, Chipotle now has 30, to 36, 3,236 restaurants in the United States um, as of August 16th of this year. The state with the most Chipotle locations is California. They've got 466 and the company is still, you know, apparently planning to open up more Chipotle locations around the country. Uh, so we'll find out just how far it goes in its earnings report and how many more, um, how many more things that they want to, I guess, push forward as as the catalyst for this stock. Along those lines too, uh, robust growth still, same store sales. So they got more stores, but they're still growing them, you know, organically at, at the stores that they have. Some of that's due to pricing uh, going higher, mm -hmm. no doubt about it, but it's still impressive. Uh, fairly high margin for a restaurant too. You don't necessarily associate restaurants, particularly fast casual restaurants or, you know, fast convenient restaurants 
as high margin mm -hmm. businesses, but Chipotle doing its best on that front as well, managing those costs and passing them on in terms of uh, those avocado. You know, avocado, yeah. I don't know if there's avocado futures or not, but if there are, I'm sure Chipotle watches that uh, very, very closely with the <laughs> guacamole. But yeah. Uh, this is a name uh, that for good reason, you know, one, because, you know, kind of what Warren Buffett said, people like to invest in things they like. A lot of mm -hmm. people, especially younger, uh, you know, folks really are fans of this place as a, as a place to frequent for lunch, for mm -hmm. dinner. Uh, you don't feel so guilty leaving there that maybe you would in some of its peers. Right. But also, it's been a winner, and I can't stress that enough. Year to date, uh, 40%. 52 weeks, 20% from mm -hmm. the lows, 44%. You go out in time, and it's very difficult. Unless you're on the sh super short-term basis, you know, post its last earnings, it's really hard to find a time in which this one is underperformed as it's just been a stock that's done really, really nicely. Well, well said, absolutely, when it comes to Chipotle. And, and for the, you know what I find interesting? For the most part, it's had the same products most of this time, right? With, you know, they've been included a couple of new um, products over the years, but not many. And people sort of rely on this stock as a stock and it as a restaurant and in so many different areas. Mm -hmm. It's been consistent, but still growing. And I like uh, and I respect the fact that they've been able to grow that store footprint. You know, I just moved. I don't live in downtown uh, Chicago anymore, yet I'm closer to a Chipotle now. And it goes to show that they have scaled effectively. They're not just in really urban uh, city centers. Mm -hmm. Yet the quality has remained uh, at least, you know, where I can't see a, a seemingly a, a drop off. And the only other company, and it's a totally different one, I like to make comparisons from time to time because I think it gets that point home, is Lulu. Lulu has scaled <laughs> dramatically, mm -hmm. yet that perception of the brand quality has remained. And if you're going to be a company that is at a premium price point, of which Chipotle and Lulu both are, you're going to need to hold on to that perception that your product is worth spending a little bit more on, and both of them have done that quite nicely.